Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the different jobs that you can do after graduating with a PhD. I'm going to talk about different career path options, mainly in academia and industry, uh, based on my own experiences, what I've seen, what my friends at Stanford ended up doing, and then I've compiled them all into this short video for you to watch. This is an important topic because if you're doing a PhD or you're considering doing a PhD, uh, it'd be wise to know what comes after. By the way, like and subscribe if this video is helpful. Also feel free to check out my channel. Uh, I got videos on grad school, uh, academic stuff so far. Feel free to look through the videos and watch the ones you like. So I'm going to cover a variety of different jobs that you can do uh, both in academia and industry as I mentioned earlier. I'll start with academia first. One of the most obvious jobs after a PhD is a professorship. A lot of people do PhDs because they want to be professors in the future. And in most cases, in order to become a professor, you actually need to have a PhD in order to do that. It's just sort of like a requirement, a prerequisite. And a professorship is actually a very, very difficult job to get. Many different programs, they might have like one opening every few years. If you're lucky, maybe a little bit more. And it's often very, very difficult for a PhD student upon graduation to become a professor immediately after. But I'll talk a little bit about that later. So let's say you're looking for a professorship position. That would require you to travel to different institutions, uh, giving job talks, speaking with the faculty there, and then convincing them that you're a good fit for the job. And to become a professor, it's not just a matter of being really, really good at research. Uh, you also need to be studying a topic that the school department is in need of. They want new faculty to fulfill that role. So that's another thing to consider. So if you do get a professorship, then that's really great. It's really hard to get. Um, and you start off as an assistant professor, and then you get promoted to associate professor, and then eventually full professor where you get tenure. So I mentioned it's not that easy uh, for a fresh PhD grad to become a professor immediately upon graduation. In many cases, PhD students who just graduated need to become a postdoctoral fellow or postdoc uh, as sort of a stepping stone to becoming a professor afterwards. And you can think of a postdoc as sort of like a super advanced PhD student. At least that's what I've always thought of them as. You might take more of a role in mentoring other students. You're gonna have more independence. Uh, in many cases, you're gonna be applying for your own grants as well. It sort of gives you a few more years to develop as a researcher um, while you're looking for, for instance, a professorship job. And many people during those years of doing a postdoc uh, realize that they don't want to become a professor anymore and some of them might end up doing something else like going to industry or something like that. Another position in academia that you can go for is a research associate. In many cases I feel like a research associate can be very similar to a postdoc uh, except there's differences in the title, uh, salary, although I guess in my experience um, research associates are often a little more senior to postdocs. But another important difference is I feel like research associates can be a more longer term position whereas postdocs is meant to be a very short-term position. If you're a postdoc for like 20 years, like something's wrong. And in my experience, you have research associates uh, being official advisors to uh, grad students, which is something I don't see with postdocs either. Some research associates also convert to becoming professors as well. So those are some like research positions that you can consider uh, in academia. If you really, really love teaching, another position that you can go for is a lecturer. And a lecturer is basically a professor that is hired to teach students at a university. However, unlike faculty with the official uh, professor title, the main job of lecturers is to teach students um, rather than doing research, which is the main job of professors. Um, some of the best teachers that I've had, both at college and grad school, um, were lecturers, and many of them have PhDs too and are great researchers in their own right. But because they're lecturers, they usually don't have the same obligations to do research as uh, professors do. So those are just some academic jobs I can think of uh, that you can consider for the future. Now let's talk about industry and what kind of positions you might happen to have there. One career path that you can take uh, as a PhD graduate uh, that a few of my friends have done is do a startup. Uh, I have a few friends who have made their own startups or joined startups. Some of my friends have done startups based on their research. Uh, some of my friends have done startups uh, not necessarily based on their research, but uh, using the skills that they developed while they were doing research. I guess because I'm in the Silicon Valley, uh, there's sort of an entrepreneurial spirit. So you'll see uh, more people interested in doing these like startups. Doing a startup is a matter of having a great idea, uh, getting funding, and then making your dreams a reality. And if you don't want to do a startup, you can go work for a larger company, which is something that a lot of my friends actually do. One quick note is uh, you don't necessarily have to get a job working in a field that is the same as what you did while you were doing your PhD. So for instance, even though my lab works on medical imaging, a lot of the students, my friends who graduate from that lab, uh, they end up working for Apple or Google, doing software development, or working on phones, uh, sensors. And uh, even though it's not related to medical imaging, 
these companies feel that uh, you can take your skills that you learned as a PhD student and apply it to their particular problem. So don't worry too much about that. Another very interesting question that I've had before is, uh, does getting a PhD close doors when it comes to some industry positions? And that's actually a valid point. So for instance, when you're applying for a non-research position, uh, you might hear the term that they don't want to hire PhD students because they're overqualified. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the job is too easy for the PhD student, but the fear is that, you know, if a PhD student is so used to doing research all these years, uh, they might no longer be interested in doing a non-research related role. By that, I mean a role that requires using mature technology to develop a product. So companies might be hesitant to hire a PhD student for a role that they're sort of offering to bachelor's or master's students. Sometimes. If you're a PhD student and you see a job and it looks like they're looking for a bachelor or a master's but you're still interested in it, by all means apply. But sometimes companies have that concern. So I pretty much covered like the gist of what kind of job prospects that you can think about doing after getting a PhD. Again, this is a collection of my experiences, what I've seen my friends do, um, and I hope that gave you like a gist of what's out there. I'm sure there's more, uh, but these are the common ones that I've seen. Uh, I hope this was useful. Like and subscribe, and uh, have a nice day.